Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's very sticky. Not me. In the grow room today, I watered and didn't remember to turn the humidifier off, so it was just blech. I think it's at 88% right now. It's too much. I'm not into it. I have an unboxing to do. Don't worry, I won't ramble on about this too long. We'll get to the plants quickly. I'd mentioned in my prior video that I was getting in a lot of plants over the next few weeks and that I was going to wait to release those videos. But as it turns out, I had some stuff come up. Didn't really have time to vlog this week, so I figured, well, okay, maybe we just go ahead and open some up. Do that for the Saturday video. I'll keep things chill and laid back and check out what's in the box here. I think that the transition, oh, the transition was supposed to be on the table. Y'all don't need to know that I don't have pants on. The Green Escape. It's an Etsy seller. These are all going to be plugs in here. If you're not familiar, plugs are just little, basically propagation starts or seed starts and you have a big tray. Usually they have about 144 plugs in them and it's just a little tiny root ball. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in here. Yeah, you can still kind of see the plug. When you buy a plant from a nursery, you can usually still see the plug down in there. So there's the plug there on that Weimzinger Xanthosoma. Let's take the plugs pot them up into something larger and you, know, you get it, right? You just keep going, keep getting the pot bigger and bigger as the plants get bigger and bigger. Leaving the plant in the plug isn't a problem. Oftentimes getting plants in plugs is just a more affordable way to get them. That's particularly the case with annuals. Wow, I really need to change this blade up. That's kind of dangerous. Just a little peel, you wanna hear that? Some ASMR. Normally plugs are the way to go with annuals. And sometimes with houseplants and tropicals, you can judge that after I open this up and have a look at the plants. I am interested to see how these are little, gosh, they're so tiny. Look at how little there, but that's to be expected though. Like I said, they're plugs. Green Escape on Etsy, they sell a lot of plants in plugs. For the most part, they're more affordable, but there's a payoff, right? Or not really a payoff. There's a, what's the word? There's a cost to that. There's a cost to them being more affordable. So you have a smaller plant, you have to wait longer for them to mature and grow up. This particular order, for some reason, I can't remember why, I had the coupon that was kind of wonky where I had to order a certain number of plants to place the order. There were a couple plants in here that I already know I would not consider to be a better deal than what I would find elsewhere, but I ordered them because they had them. I'm thinking I may have to go find some little pots to get these potted into feeling pretty soft, which is normal. Plugs aren't normally an individual container. Like I mentioned, they're normally a tray, so it's not likely that they're gonna be shipped out in some kind of pot. That's up to me to do that. I'll do that after I start opening these up. I'm sure I've talked enough and everybody's anxious to see what's going on inside of these. Okay, that's a nice sticker that they put on there, but it's kind of a bit much and making it difficult to get this out. Why does the stick, just a little piece of tape would have been totally fine. I don't have scissors out here with me. Head and unroll this. Oh, and it's taped in that. Whoa. Wow, that is tiny. Like I said, that's to be expected when ordering plugs, but way, way, way off from the picture that was shown online. I mean, way off. Absolutely pathetic for what it costs. This is a variegated vanilla. That's all it is. It's a vanilla orchid. Go ahead and open up the other one, see if it's going to be as disappointing. I'm not shocked by that being a disappointment because I did look at the reviews and most of them were saying that it was a pathetic, tiny little thing compared to the pictures that were shown. I knew what I was potentially getting into with that one. This is, come on, come on, this sticker. That sticker is stupidly big and making this take forever to get open. I suppose that that's a little bit better, I guess you could say. It's a nice looking plant, but for what it costs, uh, no, not going to recommend that one to anybody. Those vanilla orchids, the even the variegated ones, can generally get those for between 20 and 30 bucks a pop as a cutting online. And they're normally, usually about this much stem is what you're seeing right here, which is in comparison. That's pathetic. Vanilla orchids do grow quickly, but not quickly enough for me to think that that was worth, uh, I think it was like 16 bucks, something. I'll put it up here on the screen, or maybe I have it over here. I don't remember, whatever it was, if it was over, I'd say 12 bucks. That's too much for those. I would by no means call that a good deal. Okay, now this is more of what I would expect. Still not much to it. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is so stinking tiny and cute. And an alocasia is small in a starter. I think it's adorable, an orchid. Nope. Have a look at that. Look at that beautiful leaf. 
that the camera doesn't want to focus on. Yeah, it's a little bit rippled. I don't expect plants to ever show up in the mail looking perfect. That's not a realistic expectation. The packaging on these is great, aside from this sticker. Y'all heard me talk about that enough. The plant itself looks good. This is an Alocasia lucifer. Oh no, Longiloba lucifer is the like variation of that type of Longiloba. This Alocasia gets really, really long, narrow leaves on it, has a nice deep sinus in it. I believe the lucifer is supposed to end up more pointed. The veining gets really striking right now. It's just a baby, so there isn't really much to say other than it looks cute and to move on to the next one and see how that one looks. Look at it peeking out from the top. I will have edited it out, but just so everybody knows, that took freaking forever to get open because you have to be so careful with these tiny, delicate plants, and then there's this gigantic sticker that won't tear. To be fair, if you have a pair of scissors, I'm sure no big deal. I'm surrounded by lights right now. I don't feel like putting all my lights down and clearing a path to get inside to find a pair of scissors, so this is fine. This is totally fine. There we go. Look at that. This leaf is more characteristic of what you see on the plant when they get to be larger. They have almost a rabbit-like characteristic to them. In fact, I think that there's a, I don't know if I'm gonna call it a variety, maybe a form, I'm not sure if it's one that's been cultivated, called, I think, jackrabbit, Longiloba jackrabbit. Whatever it is, I'll put up here on the screen, and it has those nice pointy tips on it and a slight cuppage to the leaf that pushes it out forward. It's a neat looking plant. Guess what, I forgot I have a pair of scissors on a magnet sitting on the side of the... I haven't filmed in here in a long time. I forgot that I had the supplies set up right here at my desk, just in case. That's fine. Only, what, three quarters of the way through? Better late than never. There we go. This one, yeah, I assumed these were gonna be really tiny as well. But with this one, I think it's more worth it. These are really the only reason I even placed the order because these are an allocation that can be rather pricey. Can you guess what these are? Any idea? Really tiny, not showing a ton of their adult characteristics or mature characteristics. These are the Jacqueline's. Not a lot to see with them just yet, but as these grow, it's a pretty cool looking plant. Even at this small size, they're still pretty cool looking. It's just hard to make out on camera. Can you get in there? Nice fun pattern along the stem. The leaves are more stiff as they get larger. They're somewhat narrow. And they have a corrugation along the sides. The surface of the leaves have a really cool texture to them. You just, you're gonna have to wait and find out. Or maybe hopefully I put something up on the screen for you to look at like a responsible YouTuber would do when they're editing a video. Yeah, with these plants were the ones on the wish list. That's why I placed the order. They vary in price. The prices come way down. There were some issues with poaching. There potentially still is. Here in the US, if you're trying to find them, it's good to read through the descriptions thoroughly and not just the US seller, but see how they've been propagated if possible. That was the main reason I chose to get these from the seller and then to get the other plants from that seller, as opposed to some other places where it wasn't listed and it didn't say whether or not they were grown here in the US, like started from seed or from a division from a mother plant here. Why is the humidifier on? There is no way that that sensor is telling it that it should be on right now. Oh, that was a surprising struggle, trying to find four tiny pots to put these in. And really these are, at least these two, are maybe just a smidge too large. Really want to make sure that there's not a ton of extra space in the container, right? Because you really have to worry about root rot. So the Jacqueline's, because they're kind of the pride and joy of this, I'm probably gonna use those in these two inch containers. And then these right here, which are three, yeah, I'm gonna say three inch containers. I'll do for the Longilobas. And this did come with instructions. They were very vague, and there's a good amount of soil that has spilled onto them. It says three to four inch pots are recommended. So I could, I suppose, according to their directions, go ahead and move on to the three inch container with these, but they're really small. I'd like to give them some time to root into these before I bump them up into something larger. I'm gonna make sure that they're planted down fairly low because I am assuming these are going to need regular irrigation even though they are a plant that doesn't need a ton of water during the winter time. This is good, nice and firm, still moist. I'd say that that level right around there, can we see what's going on? We, it's just me here, but y'all are watching. Right around there. It looks like it's down a lot further through the camera than it actually is in person. Maybe three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna add some more soil in there just because I have to assume that when I water, it's going to sink down. My main thing is I just don't like when soil is up so high that when you water the plant, soil washes out and goes all over the place. That drives me absolutely crazy. I had a plant come in the mail that y'all haven't seen yet. 
that is so overpotted. Well, it's not really overpotted. The plant is, it's probably in the perfect size pot actually, but the soil level is right at the very, very top. So keeping it hydrated has been an issue because it takes an eternity to water it. Like you give it a little drink, you have to let it trickle down a little drink, trickle down, you can't just water it. I'm looking forward to repotting that one. I don't like to repot a plant if I can't tell that it's absolutely necessary. I don't know if you can see what's going on here. It's kind of important when filming a video, right? See how I have the plug sticking up just a smidge above the soil surface. With plants that have a tendency to rot, that doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I would just consider that a fail safe. I did put more soil in just now, as you saw, but I'm assuming when I water, this is going to go down. The soil blend that I'm using here, can you see it? It's a coconut core based mix. There is some peat in there, has some sand, some perlite, has chunky bark in there as well. I believe there's also like yucca extract and maybe alfalfa meal. I'm not positive the bag's kind of far. It's Espoma organic potting mix. With potting mixes, there are batching consistencies. There really shouldn't be, but this particular bag, I don't know if you can tell from looking at it, it's been one that dries out really, really fast and it's very chunky and drains well. Because of that, I'm not concerned at all about putting the elephant ears in there. I think that they will appreciate the airiness of that mix. Or planting something like a spathophyllum or most types of ferns, anything that's not going to be okay with drying out, then I would never use this mix here. For these jacqueline's, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is probably uh, a good mix. If I were keeping these indoors with less humidity, I would be adding something into this to help it retain more moisture. Something like, well, actually alfalfa, that works really well, helps retain moisture. Generally speaking, just adding a compost of some sort, a good idea. This is, to my understanding, anyways, I should clarify, haven't grown this one before. The Jacqueline, that's a new one for me. But from what I've seen from other people, it is an alocasia that can grow more boggy as long as things are warm. I don't think it should be sitting saturated in water. I always lean more towards the drier side or a mix that's going to dry more quickly with elephant ears when it comes to having them indoors. The grow space out here, like notice when I started the video, it's very humid and warm. Plants that might be more prone to rot. There we go, that's the point I was trying to make. Any plant that's gonna be more prone to rotting when they're indoors due to overwatering, this would be a good mix. Not all Espoma mix, just this batch in particular. Very airy, dries a lot. I actually am wondering if maybe last winter I potentially added to it. I think maybe I did and that's why it's one that dries out so, so quickly. I used to use it when I was planting up some sort of aeroid would be my guess and just had that bag mixed with like an aeroid -y type mix. Hey, you know what? Actually, that's ringing a bell. I think I did do that probably when I was repotting a Gloriosum last year. I think I had mixed up an aeroid mix into like the bottom of that Espoma potty mix bag. Doesn't really matter. Whatever the case, the point I wanted to make there was just that don't just buy Espoma potty mix thinking that's gonna be the right thing for your elephant ears. And also wanted to point out that this soil, even though I listed off all these great things that are in there, cause the Espoma mix is the base for all this other stuff. It's still pretty inert. That's largely because it sat in a bag all summer long in my garage. There's no moisture and you need moisture in order for microbes to thrive. I like the mix, it's gonna have a lot of microbes down around those roots, help get them moving, help get them growing. I will have to make sure to use organic fertilizers to help build that up. And I'm going to make sure to top dress these with some compost and gently work it into the top of the soil. I just don't have any around me right now. This is fine just to get them started, get moisture around those roots. You can see I have them here in a container so they can suck that water up from the bottom, help get nice, consistent, evenly moist soil. And it'll help me repack the soil around the plants. That's because they're so dry, they're moving around some. Okay. Well, that was fun. So while these are soaking, well, I shouldn't say as if something else is going to happen. I'm probably going to let these soak overnight. So they're, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> no more for these. There's a bunch of dried up duckweed in there. This is the bin I use when I'm scooping duckweed and I'm drying it out. So aesthetically, the dry duckweed, not that fun to look at, but it's not going to hurt those plants at all. Like I said, overnight, going to let these soak, make sure that that moisture really gets up there around those roots and I am not going to let these dry out much at all. I'm not gonna keep them sopping wet, but you know, evenly moist for the next set, well, really for the next forever because it's warm, it's humid, there's bright lights in here. These aren't going to go into a dormancy, right? They should stay in active growth, so it's going to be important to stay on top of that watering and 
fertilizing. Important thing to do with plugs or any teeny tiny plant that you're getting going, really all of our plants. I do try and fertilize almost every single time I water. I just do it in a quarter strength. So they will be getting a liquid feed pretty much every time they get watered, except for right now. There's not a ton going on down there around those roots to support growth right now. And as I mentioned, the soil mixture, you want to call it soil at this point, pretty inert, not a lot going on. They're going to need their nutrients from having fertilizer added into their water when it's being put on there. Just an all-purpose diluted to a quarter strength. That should do it for an alocasia in general. That's totally fine. It's not going to hurt them. Don't want to go too strong with those fertilizers either, right? Because they're tiny little plants, can burn the roots up. Consistent, small doses should be good for them. The tiny pathetic little orchids. I just, uh, the only reason that I got these, I thought it'd be a fun idea to plant some orchids on the pole over there for the tie. They'll need about a similar amount of light and water and the mix that they're in is good enough for a vanilla orchid. But that's still what I'm going to do with them. Although the appropriate thing to do would probably be to put these into a container, grow them out for six months to a year. I would want them to probably quadruple the size at least and then move them over to that pole. But I didn't get these with the hopes of having more orchids to put on my shelf to take care of. So that's where they're going to go. Over there on that pole, uh, right below the pole. Hopefully good things will happen with them. I don't know, we will see. The lighting's pretty good. Moisture over there is pretty good. I think they should match up together fairly well. I forgot I repotted this lime zinger too. I'm gonna give that a drink and let it have a soak. Oh, and I thought I should mention, even though this isn't something we really talk about here on the channel all that often, some people might be curious. I might have to do some explaining here. The VPD, you see that right there? And the growth space averages right around 1.11 to 1.12. There are going to be elevations and drops because there's a giant garage door that gets opened and closed. I really don't think this is the video to go into talking about VPD in depth, but I'll just say it is important. That's your vapor pressure deficit. I don't really know how to fully explain it without sitting down and making an outline because there are things to know when talking about VPD in order for it to really make sense. Hi, two days later, day and a half, really. Didn't the heater look nice over there? Fun thing about the heater, it won't turn off. I don't know what's going on there. I turned it off. It says it's off, yet the fan's still running. The heating element's not on, so that's good. I'm not worried about like the house burning down or anything, but that's not good. Haven't even had the thing for a year. Gonna have to figure that one out. Only mentioning that because I'm gonna have to apologize for the obnoxious background noise of the heater, which I try and make sure is off during the videos. I have the plants sitting over here, ready to go onto the shelves. I've cleared off a spot for them. I ended up soaking them for what turned out to be maybe three hours, something like that. I came back out before I went to bed, checked the soil, it was nice and dark looked moist, felt moist when I put my finger down in there. So I really need to grow up saying that should not have thrown me off that much. The moisture looked good. So there's no reason to soak them overnight. Once the soil's saturated, that's good enough. No reason to keep soaking them as long as there's moisture around the roots. There is one, one little problem here that I don't know. We're gonna be able to get a good look at it. Okay, so there's one of the Jacqueline's. Not shocked by this, it's an alocasia, but it has a new growth coming out. You can kind of see it in there. See that little growth right there? Not concerned. I keep it over here under bright light. Make sure it doesn't get too wet, avoid rot, all that fun stuff. These should be good to go. Ended up cutting things off rather abruptly because I went on a not a tangent, but I just started talking about that VPD and I realized that I don't think that this is the video for it because it's pretty complicated. I don't even know where to start when it comes to talking about it as far as how to make sure everybody knows all the things that go into knowing about it. I spent some time, thought about it, figured I could talk about it in a more broad tone and not have to get too specific and save that for a separate video. It's not the kind of information I want buried inside of a video where something else is going on. VPD, it factors in air temperature, relative humidity, as well as the temperature of the leaf surface. It's kind of like measuring for humidity, but takes it a step further. It's much more specific and it gives you valuable information for your plant care. See right here, I have an infrared thermometer. Use that to check the surface temperature on the leaves. VPD factors in air temperature, relative humidity, and the temperature of the leaf surface. So uh, to get really specific with the calculation, 
you do need an infrared thermometer to check the temperature of the leaves. On average though, usually whatever the temperature of the leaf is, the leaf surface, it's going to be within about one to five degrees cooler than your air temperature, typically. I don't know if you have a space where doors are opening and closing a lot, and maybe things aren't stable, that can affect things, but if your temperatures are relatively stable, then it, you can always just jump around with that. The reason, I should have said this first, the reason VPD is important and a really valuable measure to understand and use when growing plants, because there's a sweet spot with growing plants that tells us when the stomata on the surface of the leaves are going to be at their optimal function for transpiration. A lot of the gas exchanges and whatnot. I have mentioned in videos before, I actually very commonly mentioned when talking about plants and plant care, always try to make the point of if temperatures are more cool, things can be more dry. If things are more warm, then things can be more moist. It's because of the VPD and other things go into it as well, but for the most part, if you know the VPD, you see the sweet spot. All right, so to calculate VPD, uh, I'm not gonna, I'd, one, I don't even have the formula memorized. There's no reason to when their calculator's online, but here it is, there's your formula if you would like to know it. If you just feel like nerding out and doing it yourself, I would use a VPD calculator online. Just type in the VPD calculator and put your information. And it'll tell you where your VPD is. And you pull up a chart, make sure if you're checking out for vegetative growth, just meaning foliar growth, that's what we wanna be looking at. There are VPD charts that also factor in flowering and propagation. But for us houseplant people, we're mostly looking at just getting those leaves to grow, getting maximum growth out of our plants, right? You can see anything in that green is a sweet spot. Generally, anything between 0.9 and 1.12, I believe, is where you want to be. And that really does depend on the temperature and relative humidity. I don't know if I should give just a range like that. Just have a look at the chart. You can get it from looking at that, see where your sweet spot needs to be for your ideal growing conditions, for the plants to be able to transpire properly and for them to be able to grow at their maximum potential. There are plenty of other reasons to know your VPD specifically because knowing it can help reduce risk of mold and other rotting issues going on with the plants specifically at nighttime. You don't worry about VPD at nighttime all that much because temperatures stay pretty much the same in here. I do let them drop at nighttime but I also let the humidity drop as well so they stay together they fluctuate up and down together. So the plants don't have any issues with that, have spider mites. Spider mites all over the place. I'm gonna order predatory mites, give those a shot. I am very surprised, I shouldn't stand under the heater, my bad. Surprised by the spider mites with as much humidity and airflow as there is in here, but there was an uptick with those this summer when we had that really, really dry spell and no humidity. I never dealt with spider mites outdoors before. It was a lot easier to handle outdoors, but clearly I, I dropped the ball. I thought that it was fine, but no, nope, I'm seeing them all over the place, so. Gonna place an order for a assortment of predatory mites, give those a chance to do their thing for a few weeks. If that doesn't work out, then bug bomb. I think the mites would be the way to go. That was it for the VPD. I probably should have concluded that. That was it for the VPD. I, I don't wanna go any further into it because I have to start defining a lot of things. I use the Gofi temperature humidity sensor and that just gives me the VPD a ballpark of the VPD because it's not factoring in leaf temperature, which does matter if you want really specific measurements. And then um, Pulse, Pulse Grow, I think is the brand name. They make really good monitors where you can find those things. I don't want to give the impression that I'm saying that if you're growing plants and you want them to grow well, you should be calculating your VPD at their house plants. It really just depends on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to grow. Maybe you're finding yourself kind of in a pickle, wondering why you're doing everything right, but the plants aren't growing all that well or have nice warm temperatures and plants are still putting out shriveled up buds. Generally a good idea to look at VPD and find that sweet spot. There could be an issue with how things are going on with the gas and vapor exchange with the plants. Very cloudy in here. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up because I actually, I'm working on next week's video. We have a cold front moving through here and like, the next two or three hours, spent most of yesterday prepping for it and need to go outside and start cutting down bananas and mulching and that's all gonna be in next week's video. Sorry, this one's shorter. I know y'all like a longer video, but with the plant unboxing and uh, other things going on in the house that I had to take care of, I just, I didn't really have time to do much vlogging and then having to kick off into next week's vlog while filming this week's video. It just sometimes things don't work out and that's okay. I had a good time opening up plants, 
having a look at them, comment down below. What are some of your experiences with those plants? The Jack Lynn, Longiloba, the vanilla orchids, you can't even see them. So I don't have high hopes for those, but I was, I don't want to dedicate shelf space to them. I would never have ordered them to put on the shelves. So that's where they're going to have to go. Would be ideal if they were taller so they could reach up into some more light, but hey, what can you do? Like I said, when I placed that order, I knew that they were probably going to be small, so I'm not really upset about it. I was just kind of hoping that maybe it'd be different for me, but nope. I'll find some articles about VPD and the VPD calculator and the graph that I put up on the screen. I'll put those down in the description if you want to dive deeper into that. I have already started an outline so that I can do a video specifically on the topic for those of you who are curious and want to get more into it. Doing some little leaf checks while I'm walking around here. I am glad to see that there aren't any spider mites over here on some of the plants that have newer growth on them. This is where I would expect to be seeing them, but they'll be here. They'll show up. Spider mites spread like wildfire. So I'm going to get <laughs> those predatory mites ordered as soon as I'm done filming this video. Sorry so much the video is out of focus. The haze in here, I really thought while I was filming, I was looking back at my monitor, things looked good, but then I edited that first however long it was until I switched over to being by the shelves and a lot of that was not the quality I would prefer in a video that I put out, but it's an unboxing and a potting. Can't really redo it unless I were to wrap them back up in the paper that I shredded and start over. So it just is what it is. Sorry, hopefully that won't happen again. Maybe I need to get a bigger monitor to hook up to my camera because it really, to me, looked like everything was crystal clear and then I put it up on the computer screen and it wasn't to my standards. <laughs> oh, and happy Veterans Day, day after Veterans Day. Greatly appreciate it. Something to think about whenever I go out and vote. Did y'all vote? Hope so, we don't need to talk about who you and how you voted, just good for you if you went out and voted. Not trying to drag politics into the plant videos. Nothing but gratitude from here. Love you, appreciate you. Hope y'all are doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.